Welcome to the Theatre of Marcellus. This theatre is one of the greatest and oldest examples of an entertainment venue from ancient Rome. The history of this open-air theatre dates back to the closing years of the Roman Republic. The planning for a new, massive theatre began in the mid-first century BC under Julius Caesar. At that time of its construction, the largest theatre was the Theatre of Pompeii, dedicated to a rival of Caesar's. After Julius Caesar defeated Pompey's army during the struggle for control of Rome, he wanted to build a theatre as impressive as the one of his rival. He annexed a large area and demolished several existing buildings, including two Roman temples, in order to clear the ground for the theatre. However, Caesar never got to see his theatre completed, as he was assassinated shortly after the construction started. As a result of his death, the whole project was put on hold. The project was restarted again more than 20 years later during the reign of Emperor Augustus, the man who said he found Rome in clay and left it in marble, now turned his attention to the theatre. The construction of the massive structure went very fast. The theatre was so far advanced that the first shows could be held just a few years after Augustus took charge. It was completed in 13 BC and formally inaugurated in 12 BC by Augustus himself. The theatre is named after Marcus Marcellus, Emperor Augustus' nephew and designated successor. Marcellus died prematurely at a young age, five years before the completion of the theatre, upon which Augustus dedicated it to his honour. When completed, the theatre of Marcellus was the largest theatre in Rome. It was an impressive 111 metres in diameter and could hold more than 10,000 spectators. Just like many other Roman theatres in suitable locations, it had openings through which the natural setting could be seen. The theatre was built mainly of tough and concrete faced with stones. The outer parts of the theatre were covered in white travertine. The building originally consisted of three levels supported by columns. Each one of the levels had a different architectural style. The lower levels had arches supported by columns in the Doric order, while the upper consisted of Ionic columns. Only the two lower levels are still standing today. The theatre was used for more than 400 years, undergoing several restorations during its lifetime. It offered several theatrical productions to the general public, especially during the election campaigns. Like many other entertainment facilities, the theatre proved to be an exceptional propaganda tool. After its abandonment, the lower levels became buried under debris and vegetation. The building was, just like many other ancient buildings, used as a quarry for material during the Middle Ages. As you can see today, the ancient theatre is left in a ruinous state. However, the building was not only used as a quarry, but also as a fortress, as it was strategically located near the river. Over the years, it was owned by various Roman families, who expanded the building with living quarters at the top. As the theatre has undergone several modifications over its history, not much is left of what was once Rome's largest theatre. However, it is also a striking example of different areas merged into one building. You can see the high arches of the ancient theatre, the medieval fortified walls and the more elegant additions of the private living quarters. Today, the upper portion of the theatre still serves as apartments 